let's get this show on the road. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's six o'clock. It's 20th of September 2024, and we are talking about the Bradford City versus AFC Wimbledon game. But before we get on to that, we'll be talking about the post-match Warsaw game, the post-match Mansfield, uh, post-match Mansfield. We'll be talking about the Bradford City AFC Wimbledon game. Be having the latest Bradford City news, the weather forecast for the game, and also everyone's favourite feature: what's on your plate. So, starting off, I should to be today. I should be joined by Tony, Lee, and Robbie. Hopefully, you can all hear me. Yep, loud and clear. Yes. And just a bit of friendly housekeeping. Just remind when people are speaking. If you can mute yourself, please. Right. So starting off with Tony, what was your thoughts on the Walsall game? To be honest, I'll have to bypass this because I was on holiday in Cape Verde, so I didn't see anything of the game, so I can't comment on things. Just thought it was a bad result, but like I say, I can't comment because I didn't see much of it. Okay, and before we get to Lee, uh, also people on YouTube, Facebook and X, get your score predictions in, get your thoughts on the Walsall game, your thoughts on the Mansfield game and also your pre-match thoughts on the AFC and Wimbledon, get your score predictions in and also who do you think's going to start, shall we say. Right, moving on to Lee, what was your thoughts on the Walsall game, Lee? Uh, pretty much all got said, just one idea, was it? Simple as, really. Mystifying selections, again. People not playing where they should be. People not playing who should be. We've got so many injuries. I think I'm sure there's a lot going on at Valley Parade at the moment. It's a bit drastic at, on decks, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And before we get to Robbie, I'm putting Robbie on the spot in a bit. So I'm hoping to get Robbie's basically... He works for a well-known bookmaker, uh, and we're going to get his, basically, odds on Bradford City AFC Wimbledon. So, moving on to Robbie, what was your thoughts on the AFC Wimbledon game? Just didn't show up. Um, first 20 minutes, absolutely dominated by Warsaw. A couple of injuries in the uh, back four, which obviously didn't help us out either. Uh, ref, um, we won't go on to that, but yeah, ref didn't um, give us an easy game either, but yeah, just didn't show up at all. Uh, could do a lot better. Okay, and we've got uh, a couple of TikToks coming in. I'll get to them in a bit. So if you are on TikTok, get yourself over to X and just search for Chickens on the Loose or Bracehodge, you'll find me. I want Walsall fans on there, AFC Wimbledon and Mansfield fans because I see I've got quite a lot of Walsall fans cropping up giving me a bit of jip on X. So my thoughts on the Walsall game, was the referee was absolutely shambolic. There were shirts being pulled all over. We should at least have had a penalty. And it was just one of them, I think, bad day at the office. Right, moving on to the Mansfield game. So, Tony, what was your thoughts on the Mansfield game? Again, I was flying home from Cape Verde. I didn't get home like what to win it morning, so uh, I didn't actually see the, the scoreline until I got up for work Wednesday morning. But... Reading what I've reading on Facebook, it sounded an encouraging performance. And they'll okay. probably deserve a victory. And Lee, what about yourself? Did you watch it on Skyly? I certainly did, yeah. Good game. But we play Wimbledon this week and that is gonna be a lot tougher. Both sides, Mansfield and ourselves, had eight changes, were it? A piece in the team, so he were kind of a... Mm, I expected to win it. I expected to win it, because I think we'd just got that little bit more experience on pitch. That first break, Pato to put ball in for Vidain, were just... were electric. You know, defender were never going to get near him. Ball came in. Down with Edda, 1-0. Pointing, tapping. Cookie... Let it go through his legs. Odois. Straight in. Routine win, you would think. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough game against Wimbledon. 
Okay, and yourself, Robert? Yeah, exactly what Lee said to uh, men versus boys out there against Mansfield. Obviously, they had a couple of um, little youngsters, shall I say, academy players playing. But yeah, I think AC Wimbledon will be an extra challenge. I think it'll be a step up. So, I'll see how we do Saturday. But yeah, Mansfield game, something to work from. We'll go on Saturday. Yeah, uh, I went to the Mansfield game and uh, to, uh, Robbie had to hear me moan most of the time and cheer and also injured myself at the game, but we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, I thought we played okay. It just made me laugh when their goalkeeper, who conceded three goals, but 2 nil up, they gave him the man of the match, what absolutely baffled me. But I thought it was a good game. Point and played well. Cookie came on and light, lived it up a little bit. Oliver was just getting his shirt pulled constantly, what was a little bit annoying. And Robbie, you've got your hand up. I think Cook got um, the assist, didn't he, for the final call for Clark? I'm sure I laid him off. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah, he passed, he, uh, it was Adwar, wasn't it? Adwar who scored. Yeah, I think 90 plus 4 minutes or something. Yeah. And I've sent Stan a request. I'm just waiting if he accepts or not. If he doesn't, I will move on. But while we are waiting for time to kill, uh, same just, again, YouTube. Just to kill a bit of time, Walsall, that referee was just an absolute joke. The officials were a joke. Walsall's attackers could do anything they wanted to our... Uh, defenders, sorry, could do anything they wanted to our attackers. We couldn't yeah. get away with the thing. Their attackers? Oh, no, that's um, a free kick to them. <laughs> just yeah. cheat, I think. Just We got robbed. We got robbed. A true fact, he had 22 league appearances in the EFL, that referee. He handed out 19 yellow cards before he came to us. Yeah, we said he, we didn't think he'd be strong enough to make... He never gave a penalty away or red until yeah. say, that game, of course. No, he didn't, but it was just crap. <laughs> and I see you sneaking in now, Stan, who's probably been on his jollies. Welcome back, Stan. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're well, Stan. So what was your thoughts on the Walsall game, Stan? Uh, well, we started off, or they started off very well, but we couldn't cope. For, I'd say for the first 15, 20 minutes, Small would couldn't pass a ball, but then after that, he played uh, well enough. Uh, I thought the um, the penalty, the goal sort of changed the momentum a bit, which was, um, I'd say, my, my gut feeling at the time was it was a harsh penalty. You always have a gut feeling, don't you, etc. And, um, and yeah, I think I think the referee was basically one of those that was trying not to be um, swayed by, you know, the fact that it's a big club sort of thing. So, yeah, it's... The, the, like I keep saying, they're in the referees are in this league for a reason. Um, and, yeah, we played well second half, didn't we? We kind of... Um, we, we got them sort of... I mean, we should have... We should have... I mean, from being potentially like three or four nil down and... Uh, Big Sam was our sort of uh, hero in the first half, wasn't he? Um, in goal, um, we we could have uh, we could have beaten them. And, uh, you know that uh, chance where they were um, cookie squared it, didn't he? And, and then three of them just between them um, just couldn't get on the end of it. So it was uh, frustrating. Yeah, frustrating day. I thought um, second half we were the better side, but they. You know, with what was a mysterious foul against um, against Stutz, then they sort of capitalised on it quickly. And we, you know, to sort of as a defensive unit, we had to make two adjustments, didn't we? So not good in that respect, but they did well for most of it. But I don't think they offered much going forward. I, I wasn't particularly worried when they were going forward in the second half. And what was your thoughts on the Mansfield game, Stan? I um, only was listening to it and then I can't remember what I was doing I might have even fallen asleep um, not because of the game because I'm probably just kind of still getting to grips with uh, having to work for a living after being on holiday for a week so um, yeah good good result good result I mean I don't know you know I don't really know the details other than the commentary um, good finish um, you know it's I wasn't there, so I can't really comment other than just the, like I said, the commentary. So. Yeah. 
Right, so moving on to what everybody is here for. Well, Bradford City versus AFC Wimbledon at 3 o'clock tomorrow, Saturday the 21st of September at the University of Bradford City Stadium. On Bradford Stadium. The referee is Andy Davis, and he's had two appearances in the Championship, nine yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, no penalties. In League One, he's had one appearance, six yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, one penalty. In the EFL Cup, He's had one appearance, four yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, no penalties. Altogether, he's had four appearances, 19 yellow cards, no second yellows, no reds, and one penalty. Going into a little bit of stats, the top goal scorer for us is Andy Cook, with three goals, no assists, and six matches played. May Cook, who has a two, appearance, uh, two goals, no assists, and four matches played. Then a bit more insight, Bradford have scored nine goals in their last five matches. Bradford City haven't lost to AFC Wimbledon in the last six meetings. Then it's got in brackets, one, two, draw, four. Andy Cook's created the most big chances for Bradford City, three. Uh, AFC Wimbledon haven't scored eight goals in their last five matches. Ranked two at home this season, haven't lost five, haven't lost in five matches. Uh, so going over to the Simon Parker article. The possible lineup is Walker, Halliday, Diabate, Shepherd, Richards, Walker, Smallwood, Patterson, Wright, Sanderson, Cook, with Cav, Oliver, Adams, Ben, Point, and Odoir, Boyle on the bench. Leading Dr. Oscar Andy Cook with five. League position seventh. Last four meetings, we've won three now at Mansfield. We've lost against Walsall. We've won at Carlisle. And we drew, but then lost on penalties against Newcastle. City are moderating the knock for Jamie Walker, uh, who gets Walsall. And AFC Wimbledon's possible team. I do apologise if I am butchering these names. And if you are regular to this podcast, you know I cannot say names for Jack. So in the, in the goal is Goodman. And then it's Quadar, Lewis, Hairbottle, Neville, Jack, Jake Reeves, former of Bradford City, Smith, Hippolote something if perhaps not current then they've got Tilly Matty Stevens and Buggle who I think has been mentioned quite a few times around Bradford City the subs are Piggott Furlong Ball Kelly Maycock O'Toole and Ward their leading goal scorer is Omar Buggle with three the position is fourth in the last four matches they've beaten MK Dons 3-0 in the Wimbledon derby Fleetwood, they won. Ipswich, they drew in, I think that might be in the League Cup. And then Cheltenham won nil. Referee is Hampshire-based Andy Davis, who is in the middle when Andy Cook scored a hat-trick in 6-4-1-1 win Newport this time last year. Match odds are 5-4. Wimbledon, oh, City 5-4. Wimbledon 23-10. And the draw is 23-10. Last time these sides met, the team... Uh, slugged out a goalless draw at Valley Parade in February. And well, while I have a breather, we're going to go back to Stan the Man. What's your thoughts on that, Stan? Stan? Great. Sorry, big proper boomer there. Uh, yeah, this started off well, hadn't it? So, so like... Um, I think it's probably going to be a draw. I think uh, there'll be a tough, there'll be a tough one. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, it, you know, it's, 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 it's another League Two game in it. So, um, yeah, I, I think, I think a draw. I think, uh, does, does, uh, Bogle, does he do well against us or? I'm not quite sure. I know he's just, he's been banging. He has done in the past, yeah. Didn't he play for, uh, Newport? Yeah, he played for Newport. Yeah, I remember him like looking sort of um, dangerous, but yeah, he's one of those, and he's been around for a while, and, and he's a potential threat for them. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough game. I'd like to think that we would at least edge it. So I'm going to, yeah. And as for referee, um, no idea. Okay, and Tony, what are your thoughts? I think it's going to be a big, another big test. The only, my only concern is uh, Shepherd and Diabetes at back. 
are they going to be strong enough? Uh, but then again, from what I've seen, they a bit when they when they have played, they do look, you know, capable defenders. Maybe this could be a partnership that moves us forward. Uh, but I think we've got to do what we did against Carlisle. I think we've got to put a shift in and take the game to them. We've got the capabilities, but it's all about on the day and how we go about it. I'd like to think we could give them a good thumping. I really okay. do. And what about yourself, Lee? I just think, like I said earlier, it's going to be probably toughest test for what amounts to they'd be second string, wouldn't they, if everybody were fit. So it's up to them to take opportunity by the throat and check every little morsel out of it they can. It's going to be tough. Bogle traditionally causes loads of problems, even if he doesn't score, he, he gives them run around. So it's, it's going to be a tough game. I just think... Can we beat them? Yeah, I think we can on his day. If we play open like we did against Mansfield the other night, you never know. We could get a couple of goals. Midfield can drop and maybe try and help and hold out. I don't know. I don't like to see him doing that. I don't even like talking about that, but I think it's going to be all hands to pump. I think we're going to have 11 defenders. And 10 strikers when they get chance. It's, it's going to be one of them games. I don't think we'll see much in way of possession. Just, just think 1-0 I'd be happy with in this one. But it's going to be a draw. It could be 2-1, but if it's 2-1, it could be Wimbledon. I don't know. I don't know. And it's a tough one to call, is this? And what about yourself, Robbie? Yeah, we are no no league two game for us is easy. Um, I think they'll come up with um, spirit in their veins, shall I say. Uh, what is it? Three wins back to back now. Beat Charlton, Fleetwood, and MK Dons. Probably, I probably just put like what top five strong teams in our league. Uh, yeah, they have got Jake Reeves. Obviously, who knows? Probably going to bite us in the arse as they all Wim- normally do. Wimbledon four wins and one and one loss. Yeah, three on bounds says it all, doesn't it? But yeah, Jake Reeves will come up. I think he'll prove a point to everybody who scores against us in the release. But yeah, I'll be happy with a 1-0. I'll, t- I'll take a clean sheet, 100%. I think it will be an end-to-end stuff. But yeah, hopefully we'll get the three points. And I hope we stick with the same team, possibly. I know we had a few injuries, but hope uh, a few just change them players who got injured and hopefully we'll get a win. So... Stan, from you to Robbie, what's your score predictions for tomorrow's game? I'll say 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with 2-1 City. Yeah. Do you want it? I'm, I'm going to show everybody up and I'm, I'm going to go 4-0 City. I really am. I just think that they'll be up, they'll be up for this. After the debacle last week, from what I... But for, you know, from what you said, and if we could kick on from what we how we performed against Carlisle, I'm hoping that we can we we put these buggers to bed and give them a good tonking because I think that's what we're lacking. Give somebody, right, tonking and give somebody a good tonking so everybody steps up and stands up and thinks, "Oh, hang on a minute, these are a team to be reckoned with here." And last but not least, Lee. Well, I think he's going to probably stick with 4-4-2, which I was quite pleased to see, to be perfectly honest, against Mansfield. It worked quite well. We had a few sticky moments because it's not something that a lot of them will be used to at the minute, will they? So, a bit more training and a bit more application and they could well do what, what Tony wants. I don't see it being 4-0, but yeah. I think we can get a win. I just hope it's not one of them games that goes sailing by and referee has too much of an influence if we remember <laughs> Walsall game. You know, the referees like that and officials in fourth division shouldn't be allowed. It's got worse. It's, last year were bad. This year's worse and it's terrible for officials. 
Yeah. I think the score is probably going to be 2 0 City. We've had Dan, who on YouTube's put 0 0. So if you are watching on YouTube, Facebook, or uh, also on TikTok, get your score predictions in. Right. Uh, before we get to Robbie about the low, uh, the betting odds, uh, Stan, do you want to say your little bit about the weather? Yes, the weather is brought to you by uh, Stan Jammer Photography, where capturing your image is my focus. And that's the first time that's been used in a while. Welcome back again, Stan. I've missed that Thank you. dialogue voice of yours. Right, the sun rises tomorrow at 6.52, and it will set at 7.07 p.m. It's in, in Bradford, it's going to be a little bit cloudy, and it's going to be about 14 degrees... So hopefully it's going to be nice weather and hopefully the weather forecast doesn't lie to me like it has done in the last couple of weeks. So, moving on to Robbie. So, Robbie, if you've had time to prepare for this, if not, I'm sorry that I've thrown it on you. So, from that local uh, bookies you work at, <laughs> what um, are the odds for Bradford uh, City to win? Bradford City to win is 11 to 8, a draw is 9 to 4, and Wimbledon to win is 7 to 4. Okay, and uh, do you know who, what the odds are on like players scoring anything like that? Uh, I can't tell you, it's very sad, look. <laughs> I'll come back here in a second. Alright. So, while Robbie does that, uh, does anyone else want to, th- anyone want to talk about the Bradford City Wimbledon game? Got it. Andy Cook five to one to score. Uh, Calcutta okay. fifteen to two. Ollie Sanders fifteen to two. And then your next goes on from Jamie Walker on one to twelve. Okay. So that, now, that, sorry, okay. I was just going to say that that is the equation, isn't it? Andy Cook will probably start against Wimbledon, and Vidane will probably be on bench. So. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be Cook and Sanders again. I think so. Sanderson, yeah. I, I won't change I think it. So. I don't Cal, think Cal, Cal only had one shot at Mansfield. Yeah, Cav's, target, Cav's back. Cavanaugh's Cal Cal back, isn't he, as well? So. He's got to turn his spot again, personally, for me. He has. He definitely does. He'll be coming off at bench for me if he, if he's if he's even picked up bench. So, yeah, the, the, there are signs of uh, people coming back. I just wish it weren't defenders. Because we're missing them badly. Uh, Sam Walker to score is 80 to 1. He's got so, a ball on him, you never know. So, moving over to the latest City, Bradford City news. So, it has come out in the press, and Bradford City have actually released a statement. So, on the issue with the pyrotechnics. So a Bantams fan arrested after a pyrotechnic incident at Walsall. So if no one knows what a pyrotechnic is, it's a flare. And that did get thrown on the pitch when Bradford City got an equaliser. And I don't know why people are celebrating like that, with, well, especially when it's a drawing. So a City fan was arrested after the flare was thrown on the pitch at Walsall. The individual was successfully released on police bail but is not allowed to attend any football fixtures in the UK while the investigation is going on. Pay, player was temporarily halted after the incident which followed Oli Sanders' goal with the smoke in Sam Walker's goal mark could be cleared. And before I just read the rest of that, the stewards at that game took absolutely forever to move that. I think they got scared of moving it and eventually they got like a little picker after it calmed down a little bit and removed it. A city statement said the other supporter in the way end complained of suffering from effects of the smoke. The club issued a warning ahead of tomorrow's home game against Wimbledon. Bradford City FC would like to take the opportunity to remind supporters stance on pyrometic devices. Pyrometics are strictly forbidden and strongest possible action will be taken against those found using them both at home and away. The club will continue to work closely alongside West Yorkshire Police around safety concerns at the University of Bradford City and away fixtures. The throwing of missiles and use of pyrotechnic advice will not be tolerated. See, are facing a fine from the Football Association over the flare thrown last weekend. 
So reading into that, the club are probably possibly going to get a fine, and that will actually affect the probably transfer budget. So I'm going to say, yeah, as it is, I'm going to be very blunt on this. Don't be a dickhead. Don't be a fool. Do not throw pyrotechnics on the pitch or bring them to home or away games because eventually somebody get hurt and it is very dangerous. Robert, you've got your hand up, bud. Yeah, so it's basically... It's not the adults what do it, it's the kids. So under 16, security guards, women or whatever, can't actually tap them down due to their age. But that's the only reason they get a main cost, obviously. It's normally the people who actually do bring them in. But obviously, they can't get searched because obviously students can't touch them if they are under 16. Which I do agree with, but then again, I don't. I think this should always come with parents, especially if they're under 16. Yeah. Right, does anyone else want to say anything about the pyrotechnics that have done? Yeah, I do. It's so it'll harp on about it, but I mean, everybody knows my history at Valley Parade, so to bring these things to a game, are you fucking mental? Do you know, the, it <laughs> affects people in ways that you can't even imagine. Just don't do it. Simple as. Sorry for swearing, but I had... Yeah, don't go for it, mate. It's, it's, it's just yeah. a thing that's close to my heart. If you knew what damage you were doing and the mental anguish that it puts on some people, you just... Divs. Do one. Don't bother coming to Valley Parade with it. Just don't. You're not like welcome. Simple as it. It's on the pitch. Uh, people could agree with me or disagree with me. I'm not, I don't really want to go into it because yeah, I don't want to really offend anybody. Uh, but I'm going to try to make it PG as possible. But you throw it, throwing that flare on the pitch, it could affect people in a way you never know what, where they have been in the past life that could have been involved something with smoke. So I'll say it again, don't be a dickhead. Don't be a tosser. Don't be a wanker. Don't be in pyros because you're affecting your own fans. And also other fans, you don't know what they've gone through. So I'm going to say it one more time because I know this is not a very PG podcast, but don't be a tosser, don't be a wanker, don't be a dickhead. Do not bring pyrotechnics to from games. A te- from a technical point of view, if I could just say, Go for it. the officials have to deal with what you've lobbed on pitch. The game stopped. When that one came on the other night, the game stopped. When we were in the floor, we might have gone to the goal straight away, but no, we had to wait until the dealt with some dickhead's fucking deposit on the pitch. Do you know, you're stopping your own team. Are you mental? That's what I'm saying. Are you just retarded or what? Don't do it. Yeah. End of. It affects everybody. Not just... If it makes you feel good, you know, sod off to Spain and go visit Bernabeu and do it there because they enjoy that sort of stuff. Or South America, whatever, you know. Just don't come to Valley Parade with it. So we've had uh, Geraldine on YouTube who says 2-1 two, two, to City. I think you mean 3-1. Andy Cook just got a hat-trick. Uh, Scrapman, welcome aboard. I hope you're enjoying yourself li- watching slash listening on... Uh, on next, listening to the best podcast on the BF, BCFC hashtag. Uh, right, moving on now. Does anybody want to chat about, shout about, or vent about anything? So, Stan, do you want to chat about, shout about, or vent about anything? Yeah, um, I, I will just say, um, so when I was on holiday, I went to Milan. Of course, I went to San Siro Stadium, um, and uh, I was gutted that there were international breaks, so there was no game. Did a um, did a stadium tour, and basically the the tour was basically full of blokes explaining to the girlfriends who Paolo Maldini and Franco Baresi were. Um, to be fair, I think it was only my girlfriend who was bored out of her chuff, and the rest of the women that that were there kind of wanted to be there. But I just have to say, yeah, what an amazing stadium, um, and and it was an amazing experience, even though. You know, it was just a, an hour's tour or whatever it was, but it was, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. So, um, yeah, that was a highlight of my trip to uh, to Milan there. So, on it? I don't, the, the standard of refereeing in this league, I, I agree with what Lee said earlier, you know, it's, 
it, 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 it's poor and it's it's getting worse. And I've seen that interview the other day with uh, Alexander on about it, and he says there's no point in pursuing it because you, you don't get any feedback from it and it, n- nothing ever gets done. I know we can't play without them, but I think some, some of these referees that come to Valley Parade want to be bigger than the club, and th- th- they are at times. But I thought I always thought they were supposed to be an assessor in the crowd watching them. And if there is, why are they allowed to get away with it? Why are they allowed? Because they're ruining football. I know they've got to start somewhere, but it seems to it seems to be that we just seem to get all the absolute dickheads who are absolutely clueless, and it it, it really pisses me off because they're spoiling football. And Lee, here, here on that Tony. I just want the fe- the FA to get their heads out of their asses and realise that grassroots football doesn't finish in championship it goes down into fourth division it goes down into national leagues we need good referees good officials that are strong enough to cope with any game where are they drawing some of these clowns from i could do a better job in a wheelchair than some of them do and get around a lot quicker than all the they just defy logic it is a bit of a run on last game we had at home with certain incumbents, but it's it's getting worse. It is not improving. Where's the training? Where's where? Just where's anything with them? They're just rubbish. And I don't like rubbish in a, a group of people because, like Tony said, can't play without them. But some of them, some teams. If you if you're a big club or a little club or whatever you want to call yourselves, you can't play at all because they don't want to be seen to favour a home team. Maybe because they've got eighteen thousand fans there watching, sixteen thousand or ten thousand or even twenty. You know what I mean? The quality should be the same. It should be the same, and it just isn't. Just isn't. And. Last but not least, Robbie. Is there, sorry, is the question run about shout about? Yeah, shout about, run about anything. <laughs> I, was yeah. just saying, I think all of them run about the ref, which is, yeah, I totally agree with the refs. Um, mine's probably Ibbotson out on loan. I thought that was um, a shock for us. Um, I think he'd do well on loan. Uh, I know he'll come back to us and probably do a Jake Young or something rubbish like that. Um, and another one is the community stand. The T Della stand has now gone to a community stand. I don't really agree with that, personally. I think you're picking people out who can't afford to go to the games and shoving them behind the goal. I think if we are a family club, I'd literally scatter them about around the court, family area, Midland Road. But I don't, I don't agree with them keeping behind the goal where the everybody looks at and they know they are from the community. Yeah, that's all I want to find out and shout about. <laughs> okay, I've got two, and I'm I actually I'm going to say something, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to so I'll start off with Robbie. I agree with you on that one, what you've just said there, Robbie, about the community stand. I know the club are thinking, oh, it's a beautiful idea, let's get all these people here. But as a club... It's like you're like, you yeah. picking a nan for that, you're just showing them there for, what, 17,000 people to stare at and go, look at all them, what can't afford a ticket. It's just not right. Oh, I, I don't think it's right, personally. I'd yeah. rather keep it as a flag or a sponsor than have people there who's been picked out like that. I think the club are trying to get everybody to come together. It don't work like that, though, when you're picking them out like that and just shoving them in there. Yeah. And then my other vent is, I'm going to make it like four out of four here, uh, the referees in this league are absolutely diabolical and shocking. And I've got no more words to describe it because we had an issue on when we played Walsall, shirts getting pulled, and I swear, I can't remember where I've read it, I don't know if I've read it or seen it or listened to it somewhere, that it did come out that referees were clamping down on shirt pulling. I don't know if anyone can confirm or deny that. Uh, but it's just shirts are getting pulled all the time. Um, I remember that being said for the last two seasons, Johnny. Yeah. And, and Mike Dean said it on Sky Sports of the week when they were do, when he went in studio. He got on about it, that they're supposed to be clamping yeah. down on it. And Tommy. And turned around and said, no, they're not. 
Tony, I listened, when you were talking about Alexander's interview, yeah. do you remember him saying, there's no point us even going to meetings because yeah. the officials don't even turn up? Oh, yes, he did. Well, how bad that is that? Was, well, that's it. And that's why he said he, he, there's no point in reporting it because nobody's interested. Because they, they don't turn up. Yes, he did. He did say that. Exactly right. That's exactly what he said, isn't it? They don't yeah. turn up, so there's no point reporting out. So I'm not going to report it. That's that's when he said it. Well, that's why I said ridiculous. What, what does that assess? It? What does that assess? Well, it? That's, that's what I meant when I said no. FA need to get their heads out of yeah. their asses and fucking sort yeah. it out. Because it's sporting football. It's ruining football, especially in lower leagues. In our league, I know that there's, there can be even worse in Premier League. Well, all leagues, but we just seem to cop for them every, every week. And it, it's not good enough. Well, at least at least in Premier League, they've got VAR. They've got some comeback, you know. The, well, yeah, that's true. We've got nothing. And that's another gripe. Why, why, shouldn't, why is it not across all four divisions? Why is it just Premier League? It should be all the professional leagues, shouldn't it? Yeah, so, all lot. Yeah. I'll, I will say one thing if I can jump. Sorry, jo um, some Robbie's got uh, your hand up. You may as well sort of just jump in on the conversation anyway. But but imagine the referees, the standard of refereeing at this level, and imagine the standard of refereeing at the Premier League level. Now, can you really trust the referees to make correct decisions with VAR? Because a lot of that will be down to interpretation and when you see the the type of decisions that they make you think how the hell have you come to that decision so i that would be almost like a disaster waiting to happen for me for for VAR at that level but i get the sentiment no, i agree with me it is a it is a major decision for any supporter now i don't trust referees i don't trust officials i don't trust the fa Simple as. And Robbie, you've got your hand up, mate. See, I see it as Saturday Warsaw, for example. So we've got referee who's what, five foot three, for example. You've got Andy Cook who's six foot one, you've got Vidane Oliver. Even if they are getting the shirts pulled, they should be still winning headers. I think I remembered what, two headers, what, Vidane Oliver actually won when he came on? He should be winning a lot more. I know he should prove that against Mansfield, but same with Cook. He doesn't help himself. He does put hands around him. Some people sometimes, which don't help him either. And then he looks for a reaction. I think refs got used to Andy Cook how he is. Same with Vidane Oliver. He's, he's got a lot of power behind him, a lot of strength, a lot of height. He doesn't use it. Literally, if he has his shirt pulled a little bit, it goes down. And I've well, noticed that, that. That last penalty claim, he got dragged over backwards, didn't he? Yeah, I'd agree with that, 100%. But there is some way you're thinking, you're six foot two, come on. My mum could take you down, she's five foot three. It's just stuff like that, like just put a bit more into it. You, you're six foot two for a reason. You have got defenders to be scared of you, but I ain't seen that from either of them at the moment. But yeah, you got to think referees probably think that as well. Like, come on, you're going against what a five foot five. Like, give over. I think I think they used to do. I just don't think they do anymore now. They just make a decision based on how they feel. But I do. And half the times time, they're fifty yards away and they don't even really see it. But I like football with a bit of shirt pulling, a little bit of. Oof and a bit of shoulder charge, don't mind that. Well, it used to be a contact sport, didn't it? Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder were fine. But like I said, you've got a six foot one, six foot two up top, you should be winning more headers in the air, even with your shirt being pulled. That's my opinion. Well, he's a lot right. fitter and a lot leaner this year, so maybe we'll see the best of him to come yet. And before I forget this week... I know there's an uproar when I forget to do this. Uh, what's on your plate? So, Stan, what have you had for your tea? Stan? Turn it. Fish and chip Friday. You just having it dry, Tony? Any beans, butter, all that, bread and butter? Um, mushy peas. Happy days. And Lee? I had gammon, chips, tomatoes, and pineapple. Gammon and pineapple, it will have left. And a Nichols yes. cake for afters. <laughs> Ooh. 
And last but not least, Robbie. Uh, toad in the hole with mushy peas and gravy. Big sausages, thin sausages. <laughs> uh, Richmond, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> try, I always try to slip somebody up. So I'm not sausages at all, then, really, yeah? Yeah, oh, uh, Richmond are beautiful. And I'm going to try Stan one more time if he's still there. Okay, he's not there. He's disappeared. Sorry, guys, I just to the loo. Sorry, what was he? Uh, what was. What's what was on that? your plate, Stan? What's on your plate? Oh, no, yeah, I'm still working. Um, I'm still in the working, so I'm, I'm just about finishing, so I'll, no idea. I have no idea what I'm going to have for me to eat. Uh, I've had a very nice shawarma. I had some chicken tikka and a bit of donna meat, what's well, not good for my diabetes, and I had a naan bread as well. I have right, never had a shawarma. What, what the hell is it? You've never had a shawarma? I don't even do you know like, what do you it like is. Chicken? You, you do you like chicken, Lee? I do much. like chicken. Do you like lamb? I love lamb. Do you like, it's just like, do you like salad? Lamb's my, f- no, I'm not a rabbit. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on a carnivore diet at the moment, you know. If it moves, I'll eat it. If it doesn't, I've tried kicking right. stuff, but it doesn't taste so. Right, and on that note, I want to say thank you, everybody, for coming along. I want to say thanks for Stan, Tony, Lee, and Robbie. Thank you for coming along. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. Uh, people on TikTok as well, hope you've enjoyed yourself, TikTok. If you like what you're hearing, head over to Bradford City Chickens on the Loose on all podcast services where you can hear episodes past and past, past and future, uh, past, uh, past and future. Nearly swore then. Uh, also, we've got a small Facebook page, Up the Chickens on Facebook, where we do Golden Goal. Golden Goal will be appearing in the next five or ten minutes on there because I completely forgot about it. And no one reminded me. Uh, also, head over to YouTube, Chickens on the Loose on YouTube, Chickens on the Loose on all podcast services. So, hope see you win tomorrow, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your night. And we will be back next Friday, live on X, YouTube and other social sites at 6pm. So, set your reminders, get your calendars sorted, and I'll see you at 6 next Friday. Thanks for listening.